I am a 25 year old girl from India. I tried to practice Islam and learn about it. When I came to know that we should travel with our male mahram, I stopped traveling without them. I was trying to get an opportunity abroad to study my masters. Alhamdulillah, this year I got many offers. After doing istikhara, upon the suggestions of my teachers, mentors and family, I selected Europe as it's better than other options in every aspect. Already there are many seniors studying in the same country and university whom I know well and it's very safe in the country for international students and especially Muslims. I want to go with my brother. We invested a lot for everything. I got my visa, but my brother's visa is refused. We are reapplying for him. Our tickets are already done. What should I do if my brother doesn't get visa? If I stay back, the situation for me is bad enough. I am a clinical nutritionist and a dietitian. It's not easy to work even in corporate. I faced many hatred against hijab and abaya. I have to go back to the same environment if I don't go this year also. In hospital also, I have to live in Delhi. That is away from my home. We all, we all are in plan to shift to another country as we are facing many issues here. We plan to take other Muslims when we get uplift the educational standards of Muslim here and anywhere I live. I am having proper rules with the girls. I live in the country. I am planning to go for studies so that there is no barrier for me to practice Islam. We have rules that doesn't allow any non mehram to get in apartment from few fixing works to be done in case of any problem like, like getting up from airport and take me to the city I'll be studying in. Many of my seniors are ready to pick me up from airport from there also. I'm from Aligarh Muslim University and the seniors are the alumni of the same university. The sister is asking a question that she has become more Islamic and she learned that traveling with a mehram is compulsory and from that traveling but now she wants to do her master then wants to go to the country in Europe where she feels is the best country where to study in and is the safest for Muslims according to her. But she when she applied for the visa for herself and for her brother the visa of the brother was refused admission in Europe for doing a master's. What if the brother doesn't get visa? Can she travel without a mehram? And someone, the family members will drop her at the airport and some of her seniors will come to pick her up from the airport in Europe. So is it permissible? The question on traveling without a mehram, I'll come to it. But the second part of it that she's saying that Europe is the best place for her to study and she thinks it is very safe for the Muslims and no one can enter the apartment and it's a very Islamic life. That is more important for me. As far as Mehram is concerned, yes, for traveling a Mehram is required. And there are various hadith quoting that. That when you're traveling in a flight, traveling by flight is a secured place where normally a Mehram is required because there may be danger of someone attacking, someone molesting, etc. So when you're traveling in flight, once you enter the airport and run the immigration, everywhere is secure. Mehram collects her where she is supposed to end the journey. Then the requirement of the Sharia is fulfilled because it's a completely secured place where you're traveling, whether in the plane, whether at the airport. Say that this is permitted. So as far as the system, as the question on mehram is concerned, that if you're traveling in a plane and if for your family members, your brother or your father drops you at the airport and someone collects from there your mehram or someone, some ladies who are senior. So the scholars differ. Some, some scholars say it's not permissible, but there are many who say it's permissible. So in such situation, traveling in a secure place by flight is permissible. But I would like to answer your main query that you said you selected Europe, it is the best option to study in, it's very secured. You know, in India, you're being harassed in Europe, Muslim is safe. You haven't told me which country of Europe are you referring to? Are you referring to UK? Are you referring to France? Are you referring to Germany? Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed me that I've traveled to most of the European countries, if not all, most of them, the major ones. 
for you to say that the European countries are very safe for the Muslim women, I am sorry, you are totally wrong. Yes, some countries may be more safe than the other, but to say the European countries are safe, I totally disagree with you. And especially if you travel with me. Yes, there are Muslims who are staying there, they have got used to it, that's a different thing. But according to me, for a Muslim woman in the European country is more dangerous even than stay for a Muslim country, for a staying in India. I'm aware that the situation of India, especially for the Muslims and for the Muslima, has become worse lately after the BJP government, after Narendra Modi became the Prime Minister of India. And Prime Minister since the last about eight years. And I was forced to do hijra, being a Dai, that's a different question. But yet, what you have to understand that India was During independence, the Britishers, they divided India into three, they divided the Muslims of India into three parts. One third went to Pakistan, one third went to Bangladesh, one third remained in India. So they divided. So India at that time before the partition was at least 40% of India. And we Indians, uh, we Muslims, we ruled India as a Mughal and we were ruling and we gave the due rights to the non-Muslims. But the Britishers came and they looted the country, they divided the country in the name of education, etc. They came to do business, but they looted the country. They made India was one of the richest countries in the world. And the Britishers made it one of the poorest country. And they divided Muslims. But in spite of that, even though about one third are remaining in India, the constitution of India declares India as a democratic and secular country. And in the constitution of India, Every Indian citizen has the right to preach, practice and propagate his religion. And the Muslims had their full rights. It is only in Italy, about eight years ago, when Prime Minister Narendra Modi became the Prime Minister and when BJP came to power, we find that the Muslims have been harassed, they are being persecuted and there is a lot of problems for the Muslims. Mashallah, in his divine wisdom, he made me do Hijra in 2016, that is two years after Modi came to power, that's about six years before, and I did Hijra to Malaysia. In these last six years, the situation of the Muslims has become bad to us, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give his takama, to give support to the Muslims of India. But in spite of that, Muslim yet has the Muslim personal law. Muslim personal law means every Muslim in India his religion and propagate his religion, follow the Quran as per the law of Quran and the Sharia. That's a different thing that Narendra Modi and the BJP government is breaking the constitution and is harassing the Muslims and preventing them from doing hijab, which my heart bleeds for the Muslims of India. You know, we ruled India and, and I gave a suggestion that surely they can migrate to a place which is more safe for the Muslims and places which are more secured compared to North India, etc. And this is the solution I've given earlier. If you want to migrate to any other country, you can go to a Muslim majority country, no problem. But going to a non-Muslim majority country, it is not correct. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, Verse number 97, when the angel comes to take the soul of those people who died in sin against the soul, and the question is asked that what was your plight? They will reply that we were oppressed. So the angel replies, it wasn't the earth subhanahu wa ta'ala spacious enough that you could migrate? Now this verse was revealed when the Muslims in Makkah lived in Makkah where Muslims were persecuted and the majority were non-Muslim. Imagine in the holy city of Makkah, Allah reveals an ayah for the Muslim to do because the non-Muslim land majority. So today, all these non-Muslim countries and cities, they are nowhere close to Makkah. Makkah was the pious holy city, yet Allah commands them to Hijrah. And the verse continues. Verse number 98, 99 of Surah to do Hijrah. Unless if you are weak or if you are a woman and you don't have the means to do Hijrah, Allah will forgive you. 
But the commandment is to Hijrah. And Allah says that those who forsake their home for the sake of Allah and die in a foreign land, Allah will give them felicity, will give them Jannah. And I've given this answer in detail. But coming back to your question, that for a Muslim to do Hijrah from India to a Muslim majority country, no problem. If you have the means, if you have the ability, no problem. You want to go to the Gulf country, you want to come to Malaysia, no problem. But going to a non-Muslim country, I'm totally against it. Now coming to you, sister. You said that you're working in hospital and to travel. Number one, in Islam, a woman need not. It is the role in Islam, it is the duty of the man to look after the lodging, boarding, clothing of the woman. Before a woman is married, it is the duty of the father and the brother. And after she's married, it's the duty of the husband and the son to look after her lodging, boarding, clothing, and all financial aspects. In Islam, she need not if she wants to work, as long as the work is halal, she is permitted. But no one can force her to work. So you saying that you are working in an environment and this is not there, that is not there. Sister, you need not work. You don't have to work and no one can force you to work. If you want to work, as long as the atmosphere is congenial, there is no problem. In spite of all the negative factors in India today, as of today, whatever information I have, and whatever survey I do, yet living in India is much better than living in a Western country. Your Islam is more in India than in the Western countries. The Western country may be glamorous, you may have the dunya, you may have the wealth, you may have the scientific benefits, but as far as the deen is concerned, a Muslim living in India generally is much, has high chance of practicing deen as compared to Western countries. There may be certain parts of India which may be very difficult. You may be harassed. So my suggestion to you is you migrate to another part of India which is much more welcoming to the Muslims. Maybe Kerala, maybe some other parts of South Hyderabad. You have to but to give this excuse to go to a Western country is out of the question. So you as a woman, you did not work. Secondly, you going abroad to study is out of the question for a woman. If you want to study Deen and if you want to go to Saudi Arabia and want to go to Umul Qara, Alhamdulillah. But studying nutritionist, you want to be a dietitianist to a country which are non-believers when Allah has prohibited, Allah has told you to migrate from that country, you want to migrate to that country. It's out of the question. The choice is totally wrong. You and you did your survey. Europe is the best. Where did you get the survey from? Okay, maybe in scientific points, they may be good. Possible. But otherwise, as a Muslim, you are saying no one can enter your apartment. Which apartment are you talking about? Are you living in an ivory tower? Have you traveled to Europe? I mean, yes, there are some rules and regulation, but all these rules are made to be broken. It's common in the Western countries. I mean, it's difficult. For you to practice your deen. And do you think it's very nice? The woman in the Western days, Islamophobia, even the women are being harassed, the hijabs are being pulled up, they are being abused. Every day in Europe, you will find so many cases of women being harassed. So, according to me, a woman in India generally is more safe than a woman in the Western country. And Go to safe location, the Kerala. There is no place anywhere in the Western world which will be as if as Kerala for the Muslim woman. And there are other parts in Hyderabad, etc. So my suggestion to you is you can shift your family into majority country, Gulf country, if you have the means, come to Malaysia, no problem. You want to do higher education to Malaysia, come to Malaysia. There is International Islamic University in Malaysia. Where students from all over the world come. The, the lifestyle in Malaysia is more secured as compared to the Western countries. Malaysia is a more Islamic country. So if you travel to a Muslim majority country where you can follow your deen, I have no opposition. But to Western country, including Europe, I am totally against it. According to me, it is not, it, it is prohibited, especially for a lady. For a man who wants to do some search and studies because he wants to be the bread earner, he has to do, then if he's traveling because he can learn something and then come back to India, can be accepted. That also I don't advise. 
But for a woman, you don't have to earn your living. So why should you go all the way and why are you jeopardizing your akhirah? You will not go to Jannah because you earn money. You will go to Jannah if you are a good Muslim. And believe me, life in the Europe, life in Europe is multiple times more bad than life for Muslims in India, even as of today. So please don't be under this misconception that Europe is very good. You can follow Islam very well. Yes, many Europeans will tell you that because they may not be practicing Muslims per se. There are some, some practicing Muslims in some parts of Europe, but a small percentage. Generally, as a whole, the larger percentage cannot practice Islam. There may be a minority, a small percentage, but the percentage of Muslims in India practicing is much more higher than the percentage of Muslim in the Western countries. There may be few Muslims in the Western countries, may be practicing, more practicing than Muslims in India, but as a general percentage, I've been to Western countries several times, and you have to compromise your deen in several ways. Following hijab, there is more difficult. You go out, you find on the billboard obscenity, which you don't find in India. In some parts, okay. But in the Western countries, almost everywhere you travel, there's obscenity in the bus, in the train, on the billboards, in the shopping mall, the way they dress up, the way people keep on abusing the Muslims in most parts of the Western country. So please, sister, as far as the Mehram issue is concerned, that's a different issue. According to many scholars, you can if it's traveling in a plane. But my advice to you would be that please don't go to a Western country because you want to educate yourself or do your master's. If you have done your master's, that's sufficient. You're not the bread earner. Please rethink and my advice is don't go. If you are fortunate to go to a Gulf country, like, you know, even in Gulf countries in Saudi Arabia, in Qatar, there are for bachelor's, for master's, for PhD, and even the gift for the Islamic studies, even for the non-Islamic studies they give. You can apply to the Muslim countries, which are majority, at, and inshallah that will be beneficial, but please do not go to a non-Muslim country, especially to the Western country. Hope that answers the question.